PLS in Chicago. And you know what? Now that I've had time to think about it, I think I'll give the program three and a half stars. And what I like about the program best isn't the humor, and isn't the music, and isn't the phone calls. It's the dedication to the legend of Steak and Shake. And I think, Stephen Gary, that inside it must be right would be a good motto for you, except you're on the radio, not television. So how about this? It's Come on, Marcus. Let it happen now. You're a dirty white boy. I do love it when you tremble. Hey, baby, if you're feeling down, <laughs> I don't want to look for you all day. What a voice. Next time's the case. Are you worried what your friends see? Yeah. What would well, ruin your reputation? Loving me. I can help them. We're friends. We're brothers. Dirty white boy. Dirty white boy. I'm a dirty white boy. Dirty white boy. Dirty white boy. Dirty white boy. Notice I have to do the more difficult harmony. request Mr. Marcus Palmer and Dirty White Boy. We played Roger Ebert before that, but some of these tapes don't have the proper times or out cues, and the last few words got clipped, so we'd like to play that again. We've figured out how it ends. This is Roger Ebert, film critic for the Chicago Sun-Times, and I'm not at the movies right now, but I can tell you what I am doing. I'm listening to a first-rate act, a performance that's continually well-paced, and one that I'll always give four stars to. I'm speaking, of course, of Steve Dahl and Gary Meyer on 94.7 WLS in Chicago. And you know what? Now that I've had time to think about it, I think I'll give the program three and a half stars. And what I like about the program best isn't the humor, and isn't the music, and isn't the phone calls. It's the dedication to the legend of Steak and Shake. And I think, Stephen Gary, that inside it must be right would be a good motto for you, except you're on the radio, not television. So how about this? 
it's a meal. All right. There you have it. Complete. So uh, at the movies, I watch it when it's on. They repeat it at, I think, 1.30 a.m. Sunday night, Monday morning, and that's when, when I catch it. They reviewed the Ice Pirates. Yeah. <laughs> That looks pretty bizarre. I saw it today on the CBS Morning News. Didn't get a real good review. Did they show the clip where they cut open that turkey and... No. This worm with the face crawls out of it? I mean, it the, no. the scene was pretty funny. They're sitting there... The stovetop worm stuffing. And they cut open this turkey and this worm about six inches long and about two inches in diameter pops out with a face and crawls out on the floor and runs out. And these two guys chase it, and then the one woman goes, What's that? What's that? And the guy goes, Herpes spider. And she goes, What? And he turns around, Herpes spider. I mean, <laughs> really. Roger liked it, though. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, he liked it. Well, they didn't like it on CBS Morning News, but that uh, Pat Collins is kind of uptight, I think. Although I dig her. All right, and one more thing, and then we'll read the letter. This Saturday at 1, take your WLS card with you to the Rosemont Horizon and get in two for one at the Pepsi Challenge 84 indoor games. You'll see the area's best boys and girls track and field teams provided by Pepsi for WLS. All right, Steve, here we go. We got this letter in today from a communications student. And, uh, they're always fun to read. We'll be calling her after the reading. Steve Dahl and Gary Meyer, your name hopelessly yeah. misspelled both I was first and say, last. If you were going to write somebody a negative letter or criticize them, wouldn't you have their name spelled well, right? Why did she write us this? Was this her assignment Read? to write well, us a letter? It's self-explanatory. Dear Mr. Dahl and Mr. Meyer, as a student in an area communications course, I was required to listen to and keep a log of any radio broadcast of my choice. I listened to the last hour of your broadcast today, and it brought some questions to mind. I'll bet you have plenty. First, I found the content of your show to be lacking in music. Between 6 and 7 o'clock, only two songs were played. If I were stuck in a traffic jam, I would, <laughs> I would not want to listen to you two guys rambling on. I would prefer something that calmed my nerves. How about a bullet to the head? That should calm you right down. <laughs> With respect to advertisement, news, weather, sports, and traffic, I can just see the assignment, too. And critique... Uh, I'm sorry, critique. <laughs> critique the show with respect to advertisement news weather sports and traffic so then she writes with respect to advertisement <laughs> news weather sports right. and traffic all were interrupted with your brief editorial comments I'm surprised that any of the reporters were able to finish their broadcasts have any of them ever expressed resentment toward you two have any advertisers complained after you garble their commercial there were only two high points in your broadcast. And, of course, uh, describe the high points in the broadcast. Right. Yeah. The only reasons I would recommend listening to your program... The two high points, the only reasons I would recommend listening to your program. Mm -hmm. Maggie Brock's newscasts were refreshing. She didn't sound as if she were reading a piece of paper. It was more like she had been involved in what was happening and was giving a first-hand account. Of course, that's the way you learn how to do it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> In school. The other good thing was the All My Children update. The man who provided this report... Yeah, try and pat it with lots of <laughs> extra words that you don't need, too. The man who provided <laughs> this report... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I hate college kids. ...was concise and professional-sounding. Was he A, <laughs> concise yeah. and professional-sounding, B... Not precise. Yeah. <laughs> or C... Uh, uh. So, did she have to write us a letter and then turn in the letter that I she sent us? I think so, yeah. yeah. That's nice. That, <laughs> we should charge for this service. 
The style that you both have adopted, on the other hand, is not professional or refreshing. <laughs> Point out the professional and refreshing aspects of the show and the non-professional and unrefreshing <laughs> aspects of the show. Uh, you do not address important issues in your conversations, nor any interesting topics. <laughs> do they... Do they address interesting issues and important to I mean important issues and interesting topics? Discuss that in your letter with them. Yes. Rather, you choose to talk about yourselves and your personal lives. This does not make entertaining radio. The only complaint I can honestly give you is the only compliment or complaint. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. The only I was going to say, come on. The only compliment I can honestly give you is that you refrain from playing the station jingle every five minutes. <laughs> Do they play the station jingle often? <laughs> oh, oh, man. Yeah. Give yeah. her a call. Yep. Let's hope she's home <laughs> drooling all over the carpeting. <laughs> Maybe she's doing her show somewhere. She's playing a lot of music. This scares me. Every time I see or hear this, it scares me. Yeah, what? We can't have much Hi, hope for the future of radio. Someone screaming in the phone. Is that what she said? Yeah, it's a whole family of them. <laughs> a little den of them. Hi, Mary Beth. This is Gary Meyer with Steve Dahl. And can we put you on the air for a few minutes? What what class are you on your way out to? Communications? I... That's Wednesday night? Can we we can just talk for 30, 40 seconds. About your letter. We just read it on the air. And we, we wanted to know if you could help us any further than the letter <laughs> goes. Come on, let's do it. We're on the air here. Did she say okay? Yeah. You're on the air. Hello. Hello. Uh, she, she doesn't really want to get into the communications thing yeah. as much as she thought. Chance to be on a big-time major market station. Somebody's screaming into the phone. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, you know, some people can dish it out, but... Uh, <laughs> Screaming into the phone. <laughs> Don't answer it. Don't answer it. <laughs> How do they get our number? Hi, Mary Beth. Yeah, can we talk to you on the air? Otherwise, we don't know if this is all you had to tell us about our show, or there's more, or what. If she wants to get into communications, this okay. is her. This is her big chance. This... What? Mary Beth, probably hiding in the corner. Oh, that I... wasn't Mary Beth. No, I thought it was. Steve Dahl and Gary Meyer. She sent a letter to us, and... Maybe we should talk to her mom. Maybe her mom doesn't know she... She doesn't write letters. Well, by the uh, style of the letter, I could agree with you on that one. To ask her if she takes a broadcasting class. You go, she's going to communicate? A ask her how much she spends on it for her daughter. Because it's a rip this is, I think this is, this is a dormitory or something, right? Yeah. You're her roommate? This is Mary Beth now. They don't even know who Mary Beth is between the two of them. What? Uh, well, when the communications course is, is, is Wednesday. Uh-huh. Can we talk to you on the air a few minutes? What college is it? What college is this? Loyola. Oh. All right. Cranking out some good broadcasters yeah. up there. Yeah. All right. Uh, can we talk to you on the air now? Okay, here Let's we go. Ray Myers there. Am I doing this right? Uh, you pushed out on nine there. You're in the air. Hello. Mary Beth. Hello. Yes. We just read your letter, and it's super informative, and we're going to try to be more entertaining in the future. You're How so? You're taking a communications class? Correct. How much is that costing you a semester? <laughs> I really don't know. It comes with the whole package. What That's package crazy. is that? Um, how much is tuition? Almost 5000 Probably about 4, well, we can shave off a few thousand if you yeah. drop that communications course. Because <laughs> yeah. let me tell you, it's worthless the way you're going. Now, why would you write us such a mean letter? We've never done anything to you. I don't know. I just didn't like the show. The last time I listened to you guys, you're on another station, and you were blowing up a record. That is the last time I ever listened, and so that was, what, about five years ago? It wasn't your record, was it? <laughs> no, it was a... Uh, disco version of a Pink Floyd song. And that didn't deserve to be blown up? <laughs> no, it deserved to be blown up, but that's the last time I listened. Why? 
You don't like you don't like explosions. <laughs> I just don't like explosions. Yes, I must just have a fear of them or something. Well, what was wrong with that? Nothing. Well I then, just... why did you stop listening? Because there was no point in listening. I mean, if you were just going to blow up records and not play any good ones, why listen? Well, that was only a brief moment. We moved on from Let there. Let me guess. You like to listen to records and curl your hair. It's very no. big among, among college women that, that take <laughs> communications classes. Oh, really? So what should we be doing differently? Talking less. Uh-huh. I think. Yeah, because you know how everybody's talking on the radio these days. Yeah. It's just yes. inundated. Yeah, you can hardly ever hear the same songs over and over. <laughs> On any station. Yeah. That's okay. So, do you have your assignment sheet there for the letter you had to write us, Andy? I'd like to hear it if I could, because I, in my mind, I think I have a pretty good idea of what it said. I don't have it. It's, like, buried. All right, let me desk. see if I can reconstruct it for you. Okay, you had to listen to a station. Uh-huh. And... For two hours. For two hours. Heaven forbid. And then did, did you have to write the person that you were listening to a letter? Yes. Yeah. Or the general manager, whoever we wanted. We're going to have to find this teacher and have a word with him, too. It's not a him. Or her, or whatever. Is it Sister Mary Broadcasting? <laughs> <laughs> Sister Mary Microphone? <laughs> no. Uh, is this a f someone who's been real successful in the business and now is qualified to teach other people? Yes. Like who? 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 Who is it? Dr. Marty Thomas. Dr. Oh, Marty oh, Thomas! Dr. Dr. Why Marty! Why did you say so? <laughs> that guy is an idol of ours! That guy has made so much money in this business, he had to go into teaching for a tax shelter. You know, Gary, I'm going to go back to broadcast school and get my Ph.D., too. Dr. Marty, I should have known. He's a brilliant uh, practitioner yeah. of the art where did of broadcast. He work? You know where he worked? No. Ah. Mm. Oh, let me just tell you, he worked at all the flagship stations of all the big networks <laughs> me, in, in New York. See, let me run this by you. He said to the class, you know, I, I uh, was very successful in broadcasting, but I just got tired of the rat race and decided I'd come and teach, right? No. No? Why did he get out of the business then if he was so successful? I have no idea. You didn't think to ask him? I would ask, because I would want somebody who's been successful, well, who is successful to teach me. Not someone who uh, went back to school and got a doctorate in communications, which is totally worthless. In this business, yes. yes. So, now that we know he's successful... Mm -hmm. He didn't run a big, impressive list by of the places he's worked? I couldn't tell you. No. Besides, you... it's not a he. Oh, I mean, she. That's right, yeah. <laughs> oh, that Marty Robbins. <laughs> Is it Marty Robbins? <laughs> no, Marty Thomas. Oh. Thomas. Yeah. So well, you just accepted the fact that she said she was successful? Well, she's very knowledgeable about it, at least. Well, not well, according can... to this letter. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Or not according, and not, also not according to what you think is happening. What do you like to listen to? What do I like to I mean, you just like to hear music all the time and yeah. the temperature. No, so you I know how to dress. Hear the temperature, music and time. Music and time. <laughs> Save it up for a watch, huh? Really? Yeah. I mean, don't you think you're a little hard on us? I suppose. All right, let's but... go back. Let's talk about the assignment now. Okay. Um, all right, listen for two hours and then... Write everything down. Jot down some questions that come to mind, right? No, write every song, every announcement... Every... He's trying to crack the format, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. And then uh, you're supposed to critique us, right? Right. And uh, uh, critique us with respect to advertisement, news, weather, sports, and traffic? No, whatever we wanted oh, to. Oh, okay. Well, say what I, we liked and I thought you lifted that right off the assignment sheet. No. No. Uh, did, did it tell you to uh, uh, re review us uh, as to whether or not we addressed important issues? No. And it's interesting topics? That had to be in the book somewhere. Yeah. You didn't just come up with that, you just, did you? You lifted this stuff, right? Yeah, there was some stuff. A little bit, yeah. Yeah. You know, things to look out for. Yeah. Yeah. But see, that, I mean... That... Oh, I hear the police in the background. <laughs> Very good good record, good selling record. <laughs> that, I mean, that... I think that uh, you don't really need to go to college to learn how to give the time and play records. <clears throat> Do you know that? Pardon me? Do you know that you don't have to go to college to learn how to give the time and play records? No, you don't. Would you? You need a license. You don't need to go to college to get a license. You just go down and fill out a piece of paper and they give you one. Pay $3, I yeah, think, and you get bucks. one in the mail. We could save you 5000 a year right now. It seems to me that you would want to go to college to learn how to, uh, to sharpen your communicative skills.
to learn how to be able to respond to what people need, to be able to communicate with them, to be able to entertain them, make them laugh, improve the quality of their life. But they don't teach that there? How to, communi how to communicate by entertaining, enlightening, and, uh, <laughs> and disseminating information when it's pertinent and important. They don't teach you that there? This is just a basic communications class. It isn't broadcasting. Well, this is Why didn't you pick on somebody else? <laughs> <laughs> because it was convenient. Yeah, because you knew if you listened to anything else, you'd have 50 records to write down, time yeah, and temperature. Our, our show's easy. <laughs> and they talk too much. Yeah. What, Otherwise, there was what all What grade did you get on this? I have no idea. I haven't gotten it back yet. Mm. Dr. Marty's really looking at it yeah. closely. Well, I don't know. It seems like you guys are kind of going off uh, in the wrong direction. I mean, you're supposed to get on and communicate, talk to people, become their friends, become entertain their them. friends, make those connections, huh? Don't be facetious, young lady. <laughs> I'm very successful in this business. Very I successful. Love you. I love you. Whoever that is, I love her. Put her on the phone for a minute, would you? Sure, hang okay. on. Let's talk to somebody friendly. <laughs> I hate when these young whippersnappers are facetious. Hello? Hello? You're Hi, who are you? Hi, this is Martina. Uh, Martina. Yeah. I Lava love you. Talova. Oh, yeah? Do you love us, really, or were you just saying that? No, I really do. I'm not just saying that. Get a load of that Mary Beth, would you? Oh, I know. What a priss. <laughs> What'd you call her? A priss. Why? Well, gee, she's all over Did it. you see this letter she sent us? No, no. Oh, boy, she yeah. reams us a new uh, microphone hole. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's uh, got a problem with something Yeah, she thinks here. we talk too much and we're not interesting. Oh. And we should play more records. Yeah, well, that's true. I agree with her there. I think you should play more music. Really, I mean, people, a lot of people want to hear music, you know. I mean, well, you can hear I, that on every station down the dial. What's the point? I know, but still. But still you can't get enough, I know. But, you know, let's say the other stations aren't as good. They're, like, playing really crummy songs. So you can just keep pushing the button is what you need to do. Well. Is that what you want to do? We get tired of doing that. There is no hope for the future. Can't. No, I'm going to just kind of retire and go to Montana in a cave or something. Yeah. <laughs> Let the big bomb drop and you people okay, all Okay, put Mary Beth back on, okay? All can melt, you want to talk to Mary Beth? Melt to the yeah. ground. and okay. You sort of petered out on us. Clutching okay, your well, police I records. I'm going to my clothes off because I'm, like, drenched. I just came in from the rain. Oh, I'm think... smart enough to come in from the rain. I think... Yeah. <laughs> I don't even have umbrellas up there yet. No. Okay, no. let us talk to Mary okay, Beth. hold on. Nice talking to you. Thank you. Bye. Sure. Hello. Mary Beth, you you guys got to get out of there. There's yeah. there must be a gas leak. Yeah. yeah. It happens when you live with five people. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's really. Going you guys to, need a, you guys snap. need an edge. I mean, you guys are you're living in a in a dorm. You think everything's going to be simple when you get out of there? You have no idea. I know it won't be simple. Oh. Mm -hmm. Do you? I mean, do you know that some days you'll try and maybe kill yourself? I mean, you'll be suicidal. That you'll be that depressed. <laughs> do you know about that yet? No. Oh yeah. I will be suicidal. Oh sure you will. Mm -hmm. When you when your when your uh, when your rent is due and your utility bills are due and your car payment is due and you don't have any money because you don't know anything about broadcasting, mm -hmm. but you're in the business. Or even this if you do, let's say let's say, what are you going to be? Huh? I'm going into psychology. I'm not going into psychology. No. Okay. No. Well, same no. scenario. <laughs> you're trying to get a job as a psychologist somewhere, and you think you know what's happening, but everybody says you don't know what's happening. Or even if you do, and you're not making as much money as you need to live. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a real world out here. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's fair for you to sit in a dorm and write guys real mean letters when you don't really have any knowledge of what's happening. Mary Beth, one of the biggest problems going today is people are lonely, don't have anybody to talk to. You're going to tell your patient to go listen to the radio for more music? No. Maybe some good Connie Loggins will come <laughs> <Yeah>. on. <laughs> good. I mean, really. You know, I mean, I've tried to, I haven't ever tried to kill myself, but I've been so depressed some days. I mean, everybody, we get depressed. We have pressures on us out here in the real world, bills. So you're saying that... Your problems with personal people? relationships, with our jobs. What? You're saying your show saves these people from being depressed and... Well, we got a letter from a guy about six months ago who was on his way home to kill himself and uh, heard our show, and we made him laugh, and he decided not to do it. So I would have to say yes. I don't think a Duran Duran record would do the same thing. I don't thing. know. If we'd played Hungry, Hungry Like a Wolf for him, yeah. I think it would have snapped him out of it. 
Yeah. I mean, we're not saying we're right for everybody, but we do serve a purpose. Yeah. And I think you should understand that. Okay. And obviously, they're not teaching you that in school, so we thought we'd better call and teach you that. I think, no. <laughs> no, I think... And things do get much tougher, and I think once you get out in the real world, your perspective will change a little bit, and you'll find that we're not quite so frivolous after all. Well, that's what we're trying to do is make life a little bit more sane for everybody else. Oh, okay. But it, when you don't even know how much your tuition is, I guess... Uh, <laughs> You know, I guess you don't have too much to worry about. I just write the check. <laughs> yeah, but who gives you the money? I do. You write the $5,000 check every year? Well, you get financial aids, too. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, regardless, even well, if you're paying for it, I'd <laughs> take an even bigger interest then. Yeah, yeah you're obviously not taking... know how much the check is for. Yeah. That's going to become real important later in life. Yes. Okay, well, we just... Uh, we're just trying to uh, make you understand that uh, there's more there's more to life than uh, more music and temperature. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> that limited collegiate perspective. Okay. Okay. And uh, and also just in terms of uh, your karma, really, it's not such a good idea to just put bad letters out there in the ether for no reason, just to get a grade. <laughs> you could have written a letter and just give it to her. Oh, we did. Yeah, I know, but I mean, you didn't have to send us one. We didn't do anything. We didn't hurt you. We didn't do anything. We're just here working, and, you know, your assignment is to ream us. No. Well, at least you didn't send one to the general manager. Did you send one to the general manager, too? No. Oh, okay. Imagine that. Some kids send us letters to general managers. You know how some general managers are. They get one letter, and they flip out. Yeah. That's pretty unfair of Dr. Marty Robbins, whatever her name is. I'm sure she was real successful. We just haven't heard of her. Yeah. Back Maybe at, before us. Back in before the 40s time, or yeah. something, yeah. All right, Mary Beth. You gotta run. Drive safely. I will. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. There's no hope for the future. When I saw that debate last night, those three idiots yeah. laughing, you know, guffawing, chortling, nothing happening in their heads. Careful, Gary. You're starting to talk about something topical <laughs> and important. I thought, what is going on here? Uh, well, you know, there's a oh, lot of... Oh, wait. Have you seen that commercial for Mondale with the, the red phone and the light flashing? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, and then I see him last night. <laughs> good! <laughs> well, good. you know, I shouldn't say I hate college kids because I like a lot of college kids, but there are some that just have no clue. And, it's, and it turns out communications kids especially because they get... Most communications teachers, radio, whatever, are people that are failures. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's, they're failures. They try it, they can't make it, so they, oh, well, I can teach it. You know, and they don't make that much money, and they go and they teach, and they're failures. Teaching other kids, or, or, or not other kids, but teaching kids the stuff that they, that, has, that made them a failure. So... <laughs> Catch 22. And, but, but, and, they're, and they're usually really, really mean to us. Really mean because they're jealous. Right. I mean, I never even graduated from high school. So it's always very weird. And, uh, I mean, the poor girl is paying some good money to go to that school. You'd think they'd uh, have a little bit more open-minded curriculum. But, apparently, of course, she didn't exactly sound like she was uh, yeah. necessarily with it. <laughs> but... You know, maybe we should just play more music and not talk. I think my idea from last week where we have music on one side and talk on the other side and you just take the balance of your stereo and, and do whatever you want. You want to listen to music, turn it to the right, talk to the left. When you get tired of talk, turn it to the right for a while. I don't know what to do. I mean, we try and balance things the best we can, but when we have something to say, we say it. What are we supposed to do? Steve, we've What's got... What's the guarantee that we're going to be back Steve, here tomorrow? we've got presidential candidates going, where's the beef? What are you worried about? Come on. I don't know. I just, uh... It's just... You know, you read about how kids are so much smarter these days, but sometimes I wonder. <laughs> and that girl's going to Loyola. Right? <laughs> Maybe they ought to spend less time worrying about their basketball program and spend a little time on their communications department. <laughs> All right, we have some commercials, and then Margaret will be here with the news. WLS-FM Chicago. The skies are full of airlines ready and willing to take you to the biggest cities. But if you ever need to go someplace that's a little bit smaller, the skies aren't quite as friendly. Fortunately, there is an airline business travelers can count on to serve 63 large and small cities in the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. Western Airlines, count on us. 
Western is the airline business travelers have learned to count on when flying west, because Western serves the most cities in Montana, including Billings, Bozeman, Kalispell, and Missoula. And if business takes you to Canada, Western offers convenient connections to Calgary and Edmonton. So call Western Airlines or your travel agent and count on Western to get your business moving. Count on us to do more for you than other airlines do. We're Western Airlines. Count on us. Count on us. There's a legend out west where candy's concerned. Jolly Rancher. About a brand with big flavor and the fame it's earned. Jolly Rancher. Time was, a lot of candy around here tasted the same. Till that big old boy, the Jolly Rancher. That's me. Yeah, that's you. Came along with a special brand. Jolly Rancher. That's my name. Tell him, son. Jolly Rancher candy. A whole parcel of flavors including watermelon, cinnamon. I call them fire sticks. Plus green apple, peach, fruit punch. Big, bold flavors. A hard candy wrapped up in clear cellophane. That's so you can see how good it is. Yeah. In sticks, kisses, big bags of them, too, at the grocers. Jolly Rancher candy. Flavor as big and bold as the land it comes from. You gotta hanker and go on and reach for the candy with a taste as big as this land. It's the Jolly Rancher brand. Jolly Rancher candy it is. Nobody's flavors are bigger than his. Okay, big flavor. Mmm, this fish fillet sandwich is really delicious. Figures Arby's would come out with an all-natural fish fillet. It's so big, so thick. Mmm, scrumptious, really light, too. Ooh, lots of tender flakes of filet, so delicate. <gasps> Love this crunchy coating. It's so tasty. Oh, fresh shredded lettuce, nice touch. Rich, creamy tartar sauce. Oops, careful, it's dripping out the side. Uh-huh, gotcha. Mmm, that's so good. And Arby's even serves it on a special toasted poppy seed roll. Perfect. Mmm, yep. I'm definitely hooked on Arby's fish filet sandwich. going to get hooked on Arby's new fish fillet sandwich. WLS. So far, we've given away over $160,000 in cash and prizes with... Tell us, because they're failures. I say they're all failures. That's why they're teaching. Failures as communicators, or in the business, you know, in the in broadcasting. Yeah, I won't argue with it. Okay. You, I, yeah, you know, I, uh, I was in broadcasting. I was quite successful, but I just got tired of the rat race. Yeah, right. Because the rats were all running over you. <laughs> it really is funny, because, you know, as far as, you know, snotty, know-it-all college kids, I'm the worst. But I see I'll admit it. Yeah. But, I, <laughs> and, you know, I was like that coming down. Once I, you know, I spent the last six months working for you guys, you know, you get acclimated, and you see, you get a perspective on what the what is in the real world. And then I come back, and I sit in these classes, and it's like, come on, half the stuff, you know, they talk about, you know, it's, it's just pure theory. You, ne you never see it in the real world. Yeah, it's not, you know, uh, I mean, not here anyway. I mean, maybe you do it at some public broadcasting station <laughs> where you don't make any money, but you don't hear. Yeah, that gets me, you know, because we're on the air here. We're dealing with people that work, uh, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14 hours a day, people that have families, house payments, and all that, and some, for some little kid to sit in her, in her dorm, you know, some kid who doesn't even know how much her tuition is, <laughs> and tell people what's happening, that kind of ticks me off. In a in nutshell, a, right there, sitting in her dorm with her friends giggling and not know how much her tuition yeah. is, in a nutshell. Yeah. That's I what mean, I you know, know, at least before I attack uh -oh. somebody, I try and have some uh, concept of what it is I'm talking about, or I admit it if I don't, you know? Yeah. But... I guess you don't learn those things in college, huh? Yeah. Okay, Bobby. All right, talk to you tomorrow, Steve. Okay. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bobby Geimer checking in with us. All right, Don. Okay, Gary, on the Kennedy. It's jammed up now downtown most of the way out to Canfield. 25 minutes to drive to Montrose. 50 minutes all the way out to Cumberland. Inbound on the Kennedy, slow off the northwest. Backed up again from central to Montrose. An accident to the left lane partially blocked there. Find uh, that backup. Then slow again through downtown. Outbound northwest, still heavy around the Devon cash box. 
on the uh, Eisenhower, back up from the Circle Interchange out to Pulaski, tight again around Central, 35 minutes post office to Mannheim. 290 extension, rolling slow, York Road most of the way to Addison. Inbound on the Eisenhower, the computer printing out a backup from Ridgeland on into Independence. Stevenson, stop and go, Ashland to Central, 30 minutes out to Harlem. The Ryan on the brakes out to 18th, and again from 43rd down to 79th, the express lane's a little bit better, hitting the brakes at 51st. About a 30-minute drive downtown to 95th Street. Northbound Lakeshore Drive, bumper to bumper, Chicago up to Fullerton. On the northwest side at Cumberland and Bryn Mawr, an accident looks like there's some sort of altercation over there. You may want to avoid the area if you can. Southbound Tri-State still heavy pockets. Surmac down to the Hinsdale Oasis. Also slow approaching the 83rd Street Toll Plaza on the eastbound Kingery. Still backed up as you approach the state line. Cross over to about Calumet Avenue on the Hammond side. I'm Don Nelson, WLSFM Skyview Traffic. Thank you, Thank Don. You, Don. Maggie's on my side now. Yeah, and I want to apologize to Gary for laughing all through that... Uh uh, all through your commercial before. I'm sorry. She was, was, she was, she was cornering me Maggie. like this. Maggie. We feel so, you know, we can't all be clear. Woo! Steve, come on. There's, there's no escape for me here. So that was the problem, and I'm sorry. Sure, you were I laughing can, at I Missoula, can laugh quietly. Bozeman. No, no, no. I can laugh quietly for just so long, and I'm sorry. I tried to laugh uh, without making noise but Maggie, Steve, come on over here. <laughs> she's got there's no escape when i decide to right press my flesh up against hers right. there's no escape right um, it's me and then the street i mean there's the window you have no oh choice. you weren't here when the woman jumped out the window did you hear about that one, no across the street woman jumped out of the top of that building the over 333 there 333 building when Last Wednesday. Wednesday. <gasps> Landed on a car down there. Oh, geez. Did you watch it? I saw it after it happened. So did Gary, but we didn't see it happen. Oh, we were, my We Lord. weren't so lucky. Wow. Hey, I figure if a woman's going to jump out of a building, it's a free show. I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, come on. She was having lunch with her husband and kid, and she got up and... Took jumped. a wrong turn, jumped. I guess. And... Jump! She... Wow. So, might as well yeah, jump. Yeah, you missed it. Well, it's just another bonus. I didn't go by and see the hood all dented in with a big pool of blood. <gasps> I saw the yeah. body. You went down and looked? Oh, of course. Did you take a mic? Oh, no, you didn't, Les did Grobstein you? Les Grobstein was down there already interviewing people. Yeah, he thought it was some sort of competition diving. He didn't know. Yeah. All right, who's up in here smoking now? There's somebody smoking, and it's coming through the air conditioning. Who is it? Well, how should I know? Who it, smokes up a, here? Nobody. Right? What do you mean? There are 50 people, probably half of them smoke up here. No, yeah, but not after no, six. no. I'd say the great majority of people don't smoke here. I'm going to go look. Okay. It's got to be somebody close by for it to get into our little private unit here, right? I don't know how this is set up. I think that's uh, the case. Brad Miller has the new Scorpions album to give away tonight after 7. WLSFM Chicago. Here's Margaret. Um, are you going to accept the apology? Oh, yeah. I thought you were laughing at Missoula. No, no, no. You know, those people in Montana are no. very sensitive. No, I never would. Okay. This is a real agony for the media. We haven't been able to pick the winner in this presidential oh. primary yet, and Aren't the election it? is tomorrow. Uh oh uh, the ABC News Washington Post poll has Hart just a little teensy-weensy bit ahead, just 41% to 37% from Mondale. Jackson gets 16%. You would not call these definitive results. Walter Mondale does have one major advantage over Hart. He has more delegates running, and the number of delegates he gets is the name of the game when it comes Margaret, time for nomination. Margaret, let's submit it here. The media has ruined... This whole political process. By what? This picking the winners beforehand, this let's look for the most interesting story, whether it's got to do anything with uh, the, the issue is you know, secondary at this point. We're just making a freak show out of this whole thing. And running for president has not attracted a decent person in about 20 years. What does that say? It doesn't even attract pe men or women that would want to do it of any caliber. Well, I don't think that, I don't take that blame personally. No, I'm just saying, and I saw this on CNN last night, because yeah. the, the anchorman asked the political correspondent, the commentator, to say something on that. He said, I hate to admit it, but you're right. We've ruined this whole process. It's all screwed up. We look for the special stories, the funny stories. We avoid the issues. We just look for the little fun things now to present on the news. 
and look at what's happened. It's a circus. Well, yeah. Well, there aren't too many issues discussed on the news. No, but I mean, but it's we do worse. We, we do give them time. You know, we give them all sorts of time in front yeah. of cameras, in front of microphones, and they can say whatever they want. But they're more personalities than they are men running for the most important office in this country. Well, but that's the way people vote. I asked yeah, my I know, mother. I asked my happening? mother who she going to vote for, and she said Hardy's cuter. I know, but my mother. That's because of television. That's what it's done. It's just made these pretty boys, these personalities. Anybody, Did oh, you look probably... in every room? There are at least 14 rooms in this. Well, I c Luger, the Luger's still here. <laughs> I think he's in there stealing our stuff from our show. He's got the radio on and he's typing. Whoa. And uh, he smells like smoke all the time because he smokes so much and his whole little area does. But he didn't have one lit. And Beth was in there and she smokes from time to time. And I think she had just doused one when she heard me coming. <laughs> and Larry was covering for her. But I told him to go home. I said, come on. Go Dad. home. I said, go home. Well, I'm sure he will. That's a, a 12, 13 and a half hour. You know what I'm going to do for him? Mm. I've got this hobby. There's this place called, called Ann's Ceramics in Westchester. <laughs> they have things like they have Jimmy, a bust of Jimmy Carter with the head, the top of the head cut off. And... I mean, they like cut the top of his head off, and then they put a dish inside the head, and you can put peanuts in there. And you buy that, and you paint it. Mm, and then glaze or fire it or mm -hmm. something. Well, it's already fired, but you just spray it with a. That a whole thing was totally correct with the way Jimmy Carter was too. There's a Ronald Reagan with the top of his head cut off, and jelly beans inside the head. And that's uh, obviously correct. I mean, they've got it down to. That's where brain. I got my shark ashtray. Hmm. So I'm going to get Larry into that. I might buy him a shark ashtray. They might have the Mondale one with the big beef inside now. <laughs> the big hamburger. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very nice, very big bun. <laughs> very big bun. It's talking to Margaret about how... But don't you think he needs a hobby besides golf? Why does he? He could be home right now painting his shark ashtray. <laughs> or painting the Jimmy Carter with the sawed-off head so he can put nuts in it when company comes over. He needs Although a... I don't think company comes over too much he out there. He doesn't invite anybody over. I don't see the no. Blue Jacks throwing a little dinner party no. for uh, eight of their closest friends. No. No. Larry comes to the door in a suit. <laughs> bottle of champagne. Come in. Come in. Good to see you guys. I'm going to play a little cards. Like I hope you like Veal Oscar. That's what we're having tonight. Yeah, we're going to play charades. <laughs> Man. No, Trivial Pursuit. Oh, yeah. I've got the new Baby Boomer game. <laughs> oh, wonderful, Larry. Oh, listen, I brought you some dry sack. Oh, marvelous. Oh, God. Harvey's Bristol Cream. It's downright up. I say whenever friends come over, if they have any, I, I don't see how they can. He's here all the time. He just goes to the intercom and goes, Go away! <laughs> Hi, Larry. It's me, your old buddy. Go away! Like the Wizard of Oz. Hey, but how about this? Another uh, scenario. He was wearing shorts. And a funny barbecue apron and a funny barbecue <laughs> hat. Uh, jodhpurs and riding <laughs> boots with a crop. Hi, Larry. Hello. You know, you, you say to me... Because actually, with all the money he makes, he could fit right in with that set. I mean, sure. you guys got to be a millionaire by now. You say to me, you never have people over, blah, blah, blah. And I'm one to be isolated. I like that feeling, too, but that's Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think I was fair in saying that. I mean, I've been to your house at least twice in three years. Yeah, three times, I think. Now, imagine not being over once. That's what would happen if Larry was your partner. Yeah. <laughs> okay? I think I'm pretty gregarious when it comes to that. <laughs> certainly, <more laughs> certainly uh, yes, you are gregarious. Yeah. But he is, like, totally just isolated. It's is like... Is he gregarious? <laughs> yes, he is. That's a little much. I yeah. mean, I'm well, not he's even... here all the time. Yeah. He needs an indoor hobby. He's got golf, but what do you do now? Yeah. Or... Why doesn't he go home and write his show? Doesn't he have a spare room? <laughs> what, he lives in a box? I mean, come on. He could be home right now, TV on in the background. What, the wife cooking something real nice in the kitchen, smelling good, you know? Little cocktail up on the counter there. I mean, up on the desk or whatever. He could have a manservant bring him his cocktail, too. He has enough money yeah. for that. I just, I mean, I don't think he's enjoying life like he should be. And I like the guy, and I want to see him happy. <laughs> I mean, I walk into that funky DJ lounge, there he is, huddled over in his fatigue jacket, typing. 
on a on a non-electric typewriter at 6.15, 6.10. What the hell is he doing? I think he's kind of doing an Abe Lincoln thing here. He'll be writing on the back of a shovel in about a week. <laughs> I mean, he could be home with a little Apple II, typing up stuff for tomorrow, and then when he's done, just have it printed out or something? Well, he's told us about this philosophy on the air, and I think I believe it. He's denying himself a lot of pleasures now for the afterlife. He's no. going to reap more then. How does he know? I yeah, say, he's I say when you're making 600000 bucks a year, don't take any chances. Have a few pleasures here as well. There's nothing wrong with being an, an honest, hard-working guy, but that's ridiculous. Cheapers. All right, Margaret. Um, tomorrow, tomorrow spring oh. comes. Come hey, on, we're on Steve. We're on my side now. I know. Come it's, on. it's night, Steve. Is this Just too close? Me. Is this too oh, close for you? He turned down the lights now. Come on. Is this too close for you? Uh... Can yes. I see your scar? <laughs> Maybe later. Okay. Yeah, I think I need about a foot. I hear that saliva more... is really good for healing. <laughs> I think I need about a foot more space, and I need the lights back on, Gary. Oh, come <clears> on. Everything here you is said tight. you can do anything you want now. Your back is fully healed. Yeah, I can't. We thought that was a, an invitation for some sex, maybe. Tomorrow, spring uh, comes. Stephen Gary sex party. <laughs> tomorrow, spring comes. In fact, tomorrow morning at... And show business. Uh-oh. Go home. <laughs> this thing on? Yeah. <laughs> See, here's the thing. You know, I just can't get this across to you, Steve. I... What's what I just you turned the lights off? You just made it dark in oh. here. I prefer oh. it light. <laughs> you think I'm not having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> you see, now, now, different strokes. Now, to you, a good time is, is going out having a lot of drinks, getting really... <laughs> really Stupid. blitzed and yeah. uh, throwing up all over yourself on the way home and being sick all the next day. Okay, I've done that. It wasn't any fun. No, I'm not saying you have to do that, but you why see, don't you go home and or, type? Or what? What do you go to concerts? Ask me how many well, I don't go to concerts, concerts I've been to in my how how badly after seeing thirty seven thousand rock concerts in my no, career I do I want to go see teenage radiation? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I, I understand it. You well, see, don't you have a, a den or something Steve, at home you could fix up? Steve, you've got a little computer in there. Yeah, remember, and stuff? I've been doing this for as long as you've been alive. No, <laughs> that's and that's the point. You see, I've done it all. Nothing. I've seen it all. There is nothing left. I just wait for death. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Well, I there know, but I, that depresses yeah. me. Yeah. I want you to have a little room at home that you fix up, you put some gold <laughs> records on the wall, you sit in there at night, relax, big chair, type out a few things into a computer. I understand that. I mean, I'm actually at the point now where I don't go anywhere either, and I, I've done a lot, not, certainly not as much as you, but I've, you know, been in the business a while, and I'm pretty bored with most of it, too. <laughs> but I, so I get, I get off on going home and relaxing and being with my family and having my little room where I go and play. And I just, I don't like it when I see you, a legend in this business, and let's not, and I'm not just saying that to patronize you, a of legend course, in this business. Of course not. In that funky little <laughs> DJ lounge with a non-electric typewriter. I get depressed. I want you I to like, have more fun than that. I like, I'm not looking for fun. I'm looking for peace and tranquility. Well, if you're with, happy, uh, if you're happy, it's, it's peaceful we'll leave it alone. And peaceful and tranquil back there, and... Until you come in and start telling me <laughs> how to live my life. <laughs> then it's all, right, all ruined. Well, if, you're happy, if you're happy, I'm happy. I just, I don't know. I think you'd have more fun in your own little den. Don't, uh, don't worry about me, Steve. I'm going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve likes to take a personal interest yeah. in everybody well, here. I like you, you know. And I, mm -hmm. Maybe, I just thought maybe uh, you, you didn't have the proper perspective on the situation. I mean, I think you should be home having fun, watching TV. Hey, you're missing Family Feud right now. If I didn't have to Steve. be here, I'd be home watching Family Feud. See, it's like, uh, yeah, I, I, I hear you guys talking about these movies that you go to see and these television shows. Now, God, I can't even, I don't know why I'm talking to you. Anybody who night after night watches <laughs> Alan Thicke and, and thinks this is, if this is your idea of a good time, I'm sorry. Yeah, we like to we come have, in and ream him on the air. We have nothing in common. <laughs> you see, Steve, here's your problem. Here's your problem. You're very talented. You're very funny. But you're also young and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That's your problem. That's your main problem. Well, maybe because so. Because it's, so. like, it's like this girl who called up a while ago and you say that she doesn't know anything, she has an experience, she doesn't even know what the hell her tuition is. <laughs> well, it's the same, it's the same with you, Steve. You're, 
wait till you've done this as long as I've done this. And then you'll you'll remember that, of course, I'll be dead for many years by <laughs> yeah. then. But you, you'll think back and you'll say, you know, that... now I see what he was saying. Now I understand. Well, I think I do understand, but I just think, I, I mean, I, my, I, my perspective is different lately. And I do re realize that life is short and there's much more to life than this. So, I mean, I guess maybe I thought your perspective was off because you're here all the time. You see, I go home, and this goes out of my mind. So I just thought maybe you should go home and tinker well, around in the basement. Or something. Maybe Isn't there should. something you could invent or something? I, I think maybe <laughs> you invented this. <laughs> I think maybe you should mind your own business. Okay, well, it's was, called, was, it's was, called live and let live. I was doing yeah, it merely yeah. as a friend, not as, trying to, not as a jerk. I mean, if you're happy, fine. But since you, ha since you have done this for so long and you have been around for so long and you know this is all worthless garbage, what the hell are you doing here at 625 at night? That's all I'm saying. Get, I, I'd get me the hell out of here at 10. I See you jerks later. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm very one-dimensional. Uh, golf is really one of the only things I like to do, and I can't hit practice balls today because I wouldn't be able to find them yeah, after I hit them. It's a bad day. That's why I'm going to get you a shark ashtray, <clears throat> and you can paint. Like, paint ashtrays like me. How about a Jimmy Carter head and you put peanuts in the top? Or would you rather have the Reagan where the jelly beans that go in the top? I don't think he wants any of those. Uh, How about an electric typewriter? Accurate. But you no, get... I, I learned to type on... Uh, one of the not see you're like Lou Grant. When I was in high school, uh, electricity hadn't been invented yet. <laughs> Jeez, and... come on! All right, well if you're happy, I won't, I'll leave you alone. Okay, but good idea. Like I said, you're missing a family feud right now. <laughs> I don't know how you can be happy. <laughs> Six twenty-six, ninety-four point seven WLS Roman FM with the uh, sports. Roman. We should only ask. And was and press and a little bit. I think know? his wife goes out and has a good time. I think she's enjoying this. <laughs> I mean, she seems to be having a good time all the time. Yeah, she's got. And the, I mean, they seem to be very close too. So it's she's not got the like Porsche. Not close. So somebody's enjoying it. I mean, what? Uh, what? Christmas time. Dan went into the DJ lounge, and the lights were off, and Mr. and Mrs. Lujak were in there. And he, Dan was requested to leave in, a, in an abrupt manner. Apparently, they were they'd been to the, the broadcast advertising club Christmas party and were feeling the effects of uh, some eggnog. But let's be honest, became would, would, you, would you want Dan hanging out, no matter what the situation no. was? Yeah. No, no, I, I, I didn't. I wasn't bad rapping. Everybody's far too defensive about. I'm not bad rapping, Larry. I'm trying to offer some constructive input. The man should not be here at 6.30 at night. He should be home enjoying his everything that he's worked so hard to achieve. Don't you think? Am I wrong? I don't think I'm wrong. I know I'm young and stupid. <laughs> I admit that. But I just want him to have more fun. He doesn't look like he's having fun. Of course, I don't either. <laughs> do I? Well, I do most of the time, I guess. I don't know. Larry does not want to have fun. I'll tell you one thing. One thing about seeing him, if I think I'm not having fun, when I see him, I know that I am. So that's good, I suppose. All right, you. Why don't we skip the sports fair? I think you guys should play some more songs. <laughs> Shut up. You're right. right. Start off with college b-ball. Tonight I dream she'd fall. Harry. Nine one forty one hundred. Call me up. Send me your business card. Yes. Even if you just still see. Out of third place are in Montreal tonight to take on the Canadians. Game time out there at 
Bulls host Cleveland tomorrow night in the stadium. And finally, the Sting traveled to Oakland yesterday with seven starting players out with injuries and came up with a big 5-4 victory over Golden Bay. And the Sting plays its last regular season game Friday night in the stadium as they host the New York Cosmos in a battle for home field advantage in the playoffs. And that's it. WLS-FM yeah. Chicago. Thanks, Roman. Bye-bye.